Hello folks and welcome to my first ever attempt at recording a video tutorial. Uh, today I'm talking about Premiere Pro CC and in particular about how to create select sequences and how to cut from select sequences into a main sequence. Uh, so let's jump straight into the program. Here is Premiere Pro CC. Uh, this is a brand new project with two bins I've created and in this bin I've put uh, a load of uh, video clips. So we just open this up here. So what I want to do is create a new sequence which contains all of these video clips in this particular order and the sequence I create should have the same properties as the properties of the clips that I put into it. So uh, the way to do that is to click on the first clip, scroll down, hold shift, click on the last clip and then just click and drag over to the new item icon over here and release and there we have the new sequence um, now what I'd like to do is just a bit of tidying up if we open this up again I'm going to uh, give us a name select V1 that's the chosen name of my sequence and I'll just drag this into the uh, sequences bin here and there we have it. So the first thing I'll do with this uh, new sequence is I'm going to select all the clips inside of it just by holding Command and A, select all and now I'm just going to pull the audio down onto this lower audio track. The reason I'm doing this will become clear in a minute. Um, and just to show you that there's uh, obviously a bunch of ways you can navigate through the timeline, you can scrub you can jump from clip to clip like this and of course you can just play the uh, play the video clips back. But you'll notice that as the playhead moves the particular clip that it's over at that time will be selected and this is something I've set up in Premiere Pro itself. If you go to sequence and come down to here selection flo follows playhead that just means that whatever the playhead is over at that particular time uh, will be selected, which is very handy. And the way to indicate a particular clip as a select would be to nudge it up onto the next above video and audio track. And that's why I set up um, the video clip so that the audio is on A2 so that it can be nudged up to A1. Um, and the way that you nudge it up is to use the nudge up command, which I've mapped to uh, a particular keyboard shortcut. In my case it's Alt Up Arrow. There we go. And that just indicates that this particular clip you want to choose as a select. So as you go through the timeline and find particular clips um, which you think you'll be using later you can uh, use that command Alt and Up. Alt and Up. Uh, I like this clip so Alt and Up. Or you can go Alt and Down if you change your mind you know, simple. Something you might want to do is you might want to just cut a section of a clip and choose that as a select rather than selecting the entire uh, length of the clip. So for example here maybe I just want this um, clip that's starting at this particular point in time. In this case what you probably do is add edit to the clip. Um, I have this mapped to a keyboard shortcut, the add edit command. In my case it's just P, so I press P. I'd add an edit there. And I'll play forwards a little bit. Stop there, press P again, and now I can use Alt up to mark that as a select. Um, I can do the same thing here. I just want this section starting here. So I add an edit, play forward a bit, okay stop there, add another edit, just zoom in a little bit, alt and up arrow and I've marked that as a select as well. So something you might want to do as you go through your selects timeline is you might want to trim your clips as you go along. This isn't absolutely necessary, it just depends on how you like to work. Uh, but if you want to trim your clips as you go, the best command to use is ripple trim to playhead 
and you can set this up for the left and right hand sides and I've mapped these to the uh, keyboard shortcuts as well in my case it's just the square brackets so I'm going to ripple trim the left side with the left square bracket and ripple trim the right side with the right square bracket and I can do this as I go through the timeline maybe also marking those as selects by again using the nudge command alt and up and so you build up a uh, sequence of selects but there are also ways of organizing the timeline itself if you want to um, set it up so that um, it's easy to find a particular shot later on um, let's say for example um, we want to mark a section that indicates that there's a lot of shots here of apples on tables but what we could do is add a marker to the timeline with some text set up um, saying apples on tables and that's exactly what we'll do right now um, we come to the start of this clip and remember we're adding a marker to the timeline itself rather than to individual clips so make sure the clips are deselected press M for marker press M again and you get this uh, marker window and now I can type in apples on tables and in Premiere it's really simple to turn a marker into a spanned marker you just hold down alt click on the marker and then you can just drag it out like that um, we could add another marker maybe down here for the coconuts come to there again make sure the clips are deselected press M for marker M again to bring this up coconuts I'll turn this into a spanned marker as well oops just drag that out and maybe just one more there's a whole lot of uh, Morris dancers here deselect the clips press M for marker press M again to bring up the marker window and here I'll type in Morris Answers. Okay, so there we go, and it's easy to um, go from one marker to another if you set up a uh, keyboard shortcut uh, to do so. So we jump um, between markers like this. I have it mapped to shift up and shift down. Yeah, so I can jump between those markers. And what you could also do is add an overlay to your monitor. So if you come here to the spanner icon in this monitor, click on it, and we scroll down to overlays, click on that, and now an overlay has been selected. And you can also configure what kind of overlay that you want. If you come down here to uh, overlay settings and settings you get this overlays window um, you can set up an overlay to show source time code sequence time code and so on in this case we just want it sh to show the uh, marker text so there we go so we get the marker text up here in the top left hand corner of the monitor and as you go between the uh, different markers in your timeline you see the different marker text. One last thing to show with markers is that if you come up here to the marker pull down menu make sure that this is checked on ripple sequence markers it just means that if you were to for example select some clips here and to take them out of the timeline um, let's say I was to hold down alt and press backspace so that everything ripples down it just means that the markers uh, beyond that point ripple down as well I'll just undo that so you can see I'll just do this again choose a section alt backspace and there you see the marker ripples down as well so what we want to do is cut from this selects sequence into a main sequence um, 
So I'm going to create a main sequence by coming over here, choosing this, Command D to duplicate, and I'll call this duplicate main sequence. Open it up. And now of course the contents are exactly the same as the previous sequence and we don't want that so just uh, Command A to select all the clips, delete, and then right click here, choose clear all markers and now we have a fresh new sequence to cut into. Um, I'm just going to pull up a few of these just so it looks a bit more like a uh, select sequence. And the idea is we want to cut from this sequence into the main sequence. The first thing to do would be to grab the selects sequence icon and drag it into the source monitor. Click on the spanner and choose open sequence in timeline. And so now this sequence timeline is ganged with the source monitor. And what I would do is choose a section of selects with in and out, I know. Go to my main sequence and now overwrite or insert into this sequence. But just before I do that, uh, there's a couple of things I need to check. First of all, I need to, to decide whether to insert into the sequence um, either individual clips or a nest of clips and you set this up by clicking this button here. I want um, to insert into this sequence as individual clips so I would turn this off and now I need to set up my track patching. The thing is it doesn't really matter how you track patch your select sequence itself uh, these have no influence over how um, or rather which tracks are cut into your main sequence. I could just set these up here as a as a reference um, showing to myself that I want to cut uh, V2 and A1 into the main sequence. And so I need to configure on the left hand side here, this is the source side, uh, which tracks are coming from the other sequence. So in this case just make sure V2 and A1 are selected. These others um, are not really relevant right now. And then just overwrite or insert into the main sequence. If I wanted to insert into the sequence these clips as a nest, I would just go back here, click this on, and there you have the same clips but in a nest. Now the thing is with Premiere, it's an incredibly flexible program, so you could, for example, have uh, more than one uh, sequence ganged to the source monitor. I could, um, for example, duplicate this select sequence here, Command D, and I'll call the duplicate uh, Select V2. I'll drag that into the source monitor, and now come to the spanner and choose that as open sequence in timeline. And now I have two separate sequences which are ganged to the source monitor. And if I click between them here, you can see that they change. Okay. Now in a real world situation, perhaps this selects V1 sequence would be um, a whole load of uh, interview footage and the selects V2 sequence would be a whole load of B-roll footage and you would cut from those individually into your main sequence. The last thing I want to mention is that you can obviously in Premiere Pro uh, have multiple sequences open at the same time but you can in fact view them in parallel at the same time. So if I was to drag, uh, click and drag here and then pull down to this highlighted area of the timeline area, release I can now see these two uh, timelines at the same time. I could also do the same thing with the main sequence. Release, 
and um, I'm slightly running out of uh, screen space here but if you have an external monitor this will make the process a bit easier. Uh, I can just resize uh, these timelines a little bit and one of the advantages of, of doing this is that you can actually just um, choose uh, clips from these timelines, highlight them and drag them into your main sequence like this and uh, you could also do the same thing with this second sequence highlight a couple of clips and drag from one sequence into the other so there you go thanks a lot for watching um, remember this is a simplified version of the workflow um, there's many different variations of it and you might need to change it depending on the kind of film project you're working on uh, but hopefully it's been helpful and uh, Happy editing.